Welcome everybody. Uh, today, uh, welcome everybody back to another AIJ Insider. We have special guest today, Rodrigo Pusala. Very excited to talk about uh, something very relevant to 2020 with him, and that's about the onboarding process and how that's changed during the pandemic, something we've dealt with a lot. Uh, we'll be talking with him through some of his personal experiences with that and how we all face those complicated challenges in today's market and specifically around switching jobs. He's currently the Associate Creative Director at Interface. And for those of you who don't know, Interface is the global leader in commercial flooring with amazing foundation in sustainability and creativity. And seriously, a huge foundation of sustainability, which is really cool. Rodrigo uses his skills as a strategic thinker with a passion for processes to improve the quality and efficiency within the creative and the marketing teams at Interface. He has over 15 years of experience in the field including creating his own studio, Hot Pot Creative, to working at large agencies like Wonderman Thompson. We have a lot to learn from him today, but first as always, we'd like to thank our dedicated team on the in-house committee. So with that, Sam. Yeah, yeah. So again, you know, this slide, we'd like to highlight our team because today Lucas will be the host, kind of conducting the conversation uh, with Rodrigo, and then I will be his backup and kind of running the tech in the background and monitoring the Q&A as well as the chat function. So feel free to use that to interact with us. Um, but we've got Meg and Courtney on the team as well. Uh, they do a ton of work with us as you know, sometimes they're hosting and then other times, you know, we rotate uh, working on the promos and, and other components of, you know, bringing this, this program to you. So with that, I'll turn it over to Amy, our friend at the creative group. Hey guys, I'm Amy Mangan with TCG, the creative group, and I'm going to chat about our November market minute. Um, so first I have some info for you specifically from Atlanta on the next slide. There we go. Um, so you can ignore the numbers on the green bar chart, but basically what we're looking at here is specifically TCG um, new placements over the course of October. And you can notice that graphic design was the number one position placed. We saw a huge increase in business over the month of October. And that's tre that trend has continued now into November. We're extremely busy. Um, but a lot of those positions are in the creative design space and they're sort of broken out. So you might see some other digital design roles down below. Um, but yeah, tons of design jobs. So that's good news for everybody on this call. Um, and then on the right, those numbers are specific to Atlanta. However, they're, they're not necessarily specific to the creative industry. It's just sort of across the board. The good news is that um, we uh, added 20,000 jobs in Georgia uh, in the month of September and 18,000 of those were actually in the Atlanta market. So that's great. We're getting busier. We're seeing more jobs. We're seeing more people um, becoming employed. And we're also seeing that trend line of the crazy high unemployment number continuing to go down. Down. Um, and it's just around, you know, six and a half percent in Atlanta. I expect when the October numbers come out any day now, we should see that go down even further. Um, and unsurprisingly, over half of hiring managers are um, hiring both full time and temporary folks on a on a completely remote basis. That really hasn't changed. Um, and while I'm at it, it's not on the slide, but for those of you who are job seeking right now, um, you might've heard in the news that Inspire Brands actually uh, did a huge deal buying Dunkin' Donuts. So we don't know what that's gonna look like. If that means they're gonna bring their creative and their marketing teams here to Atlanta, my guess is they will because all the other Inspire teams are local. Um, but if the, if you're looking for a job, might wanna put a Google alert on their careers page um, and you know keep an eye out for postings as they continue to move people and grow. Um, and then the next slide, we're looking at more just kind of um, general e-commerce growth. It's something we've continued to talk about, but it's it's pretty, it's nuts. I mean, 
Best Buy and Target are surging more than 100% year over year for e-commerce sales. I know I personally have contributed to that quite a bit. Um, I don't know if anyone else has, but I've been buying a lot of stuff on Target online. Um, and that trend line's expected to continue to grow pretty significantly, but it was just accelerated um, due to COVID. And then um, after that, a quick peek at um, what parents are looking at and looking for amidst COVID um, in their employment. We'll wait till the slide catches up. There we go. Um, so this is a whole report that Robert Half did about how to support working parents on your team, whether they're peers, whether they're reporting to you. Um, I know Sam and I are shaking our heads. Rodrigo's in that boat. Lucas, everybody, everybody's got, you know, stuff going on, right? Um, but working parents, um, you know, need some different flexibility. And that continues to shift depending on the age of the children and what's going on with their schools. Now that we're looking like maybe we're going back into sort of a more severe lockdown phase, things could change again. Um, but working parents are saying about 80% of them want to continue to be able to work from home um, at least much more than they were in the past once this is over. And they're saying that windowed work is really the way that um, they're able to be the most productive. I think you know, parent, people who aren't parents could probably agree with that as well. Um, and most people are saying that they just have a better work-life balance without that commute. Um, and especially in Atlanta, I think we can all agree that we we could lose the commute. Um, I think the average in Atlanta is somewhere around two hours a day. Um, so if you can, if you've gotten used to earning those two hours back in your day, it's probably um, something you'd like to maintain moving forward. I think the next piece is interesting. So working relationships, uh, parents are three times more likely to say that they feel closer to their boss and their peers than they did prior to this. I think that's because we're inviting people into our homes, literally with our, with all of our zoom meetings every day. Um, but also that we're just having to be more flexible with each other and supporting each other in ways that we didn't used to have to. Um, and then uh, conversely, though, they're two times more likely to feel greater competition amongst the team. Um, so that's something to just maybe be aware of if you're managing folks or, um, you know, leading on a team, how to sort of make sure everybody feels like they're on a level playing field, despite any challenges they may have personally at home. Um, and then this other piece is something to take note of. So Working parents specifically are looking at taking a move in the next couple months. So about 36% of them said they were uh, updating their resumes, updating their portfolios and starting to dip their toe out and see what's out there. So um, definitely, you know, make sure that you're staying close to people, that you're still doing your annual reviews, you're giving them um, proper increases and bonuses where you can uh, to try to maintain any kind of uh, retention that you can because losing a quarter of your team would not be awesome. Um, so that's pretty much it for me. If you'd like to see the whole report, definitely reach out to me. My contact info is on the next slide. Um, and you can hook up with me on LinkedIn or email me, whatever's easier. And if for some reason you still don't have the 2021 salary guide, please, please let me know and I'll get you a free copy. It's a really awesome resource, um, for you to use to hopefully get yourself a raise too. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Lucas. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Uh, really interesting, actually, that, that statistic about feeling closer to your coworkers when we're farther away. So that's actually going to be a point of topic today. So uh, with that said, Rodrigo, welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, we, are, <laughs> we are really excited to hear about your, your process, your passion for process and your experience over the years and how that's like helped create workflows and improve quality and efficiency. Uh, and obviously during times like this. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you found your job at uh, Interface Now uh, and when that started earlier this year? Yeah, uh, thank you guys for having me here. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to share my, my uh, story with uh, these people. Um, Interface, it's, it's kind of um, interesting. I joined uh, Wonderman Thompson at uh, some point in 2019, right? And um, I just got there and I had an email from um, one, uh, uh, one of the headhunters here in Atlanta saying, hey, we have this opportunity. Uh, would you mind taking a look and, and, and see if you are interested? And 
Again, I just landed at uh, Wonderman Thompson. For uh, those of you guys who are not familiar, Wonderman Thompson is the result of the merge between JWT and Wonderman, uh, two giant uh, agencies uh, at global level. So I was very excited to be part of that group. And then um, I went to the uh, interface website and I, and I saw uh, carpet tile, flooring, and I was like, eh, this might not be uh, sexy enough for um, this time in my career. So I was like, uh, thanks, but not thanks. I really appreciate it. So I kept going with uh, Wonderman and then um, our uh, the subdivision that I was part of uh, for Wonderman Thompson, uh, there was as part of the merge, uh, there was a restructure and as a result, uh, they shut down our operation completely, uh, including offices in three or four cities and a team of probably 50 people. So at that point, I just realized that um, no, one of my, um, um, she was another associate career director in my previous role with uh, the uh, Home Depot, um, uh, account for our Donnelly. And she said, hey, you should look into this. This is an amazing company from Atlanta and they are just amazing. Their design, their product, their uh, commitment to the environment. Uh, it is just a, a great company. And I was like, huh, I looked at them uh, a couple of months ago, but I wasn't that interested about it. And then I started uh, digging into it and uh, I was approached by uh, the headhunter looking for, or one of them looking for that uh, role. And as I started just um, doing some research, going through our website, going through our uh, social uh, network, uh, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, I was uh, super engaged uh, day by day, right? Learning about uh, our commitment to the environment, uh, the quality of our product. So uh, interface, uh, our product is a high-end uh, carpet tile and LVT uh, product. Uh, we are very involved with um, design in general. So we, uh, we are a B2B company and we work directly with uh, architects and interior designers. So I started to learn about that and uh, my uh, resume went through and I got my first interview and I was um, so um, impressed about the real story behind the uh, environmental commitment. It is not just a pitch, it is something that we uh, really take seriously and we are uh, very well known around the world because of what we do. Uh, so I went through, uh, I don't know, two, three rounds of interviews and everything just um, was right for me and apparently was uh, right for them. And um, here I am. I am super proud and happy to be part of that team. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great, great company. Uh, it's interesting too, the time you joined Interface. Uh, so you joined it, I think, right before the pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. And so obviously there's hurdles anytime you're joining a, a team, uh, you have to learn the landscape in a, a company as big as Interface. So how did you start to navigate and find your place at the company, especially as the pandemic became a more and more of a reality for us? Yeah, it's been an interesting challenge. Um, I think the, the, the most, um, the hardest part of it is understanding our product, understanding our production process, understanding everything that needs to happen from the time one of our uh, designers create a specific product or collection all the way to when we put that uh, product uh, on the market, right? Yeah. Um, so I was, um, I don't know, two or three weeks into my role uh, when uh, the pandemic started and we went all home. So I was lucky enough to have uh, a little bit of um, uh, understanding of the process. I was part of uh, uh, training uh, sessions with uh, the sales team that was hired at the same time as I was. I was able to go to our plants. I was able to go to all of our locations in LaGrange, uh, Georgia, uh, just to understand as much as I could about the product. But it is a very complicated process. It is um, a long process. It is a multi-team uh, kind of procedure that involves uh, a huge amount of things that need to happen together simultaneously and, and roll together 
uh, all the way throughout uh, throughout the process. So not having access to specific people, not having access to all the materials that we produce. Because uh, when we are at base camp, our uh, headquarters, which I encourage people to just take a look at, it's an amazing building and uh, you're gonna uh, find uh, plenty of information in YouTube about it. Um, right there, we have product samples, we have most of our books, uh, we have all the resources that we need to to understand and put together all the creative work that we need to uh, that we need to put together, right? So not having access to all those resources, human resources and physical resources, has been a challenge. Um, moving into as as um, Amy was going through all the statistics and how uh, we have changed this year, um, we all in general. Uh, so understanding that new pace of things, understanding that new way of getting together with your team, getting together with other teams, uh, moving what is supposed to be like face-to-face -face conversations happening uh, through the building to just email communication and, and how overwhelming it can be. Um, I don't know, it's... it's Grabbing all that information that you need to that you need to put together your work. Um, so that's that's very tricky. Uh, understanding our branding um, as a high end company slash product, um, there is a lot that it goes into our branding and um, being a global organization with multiple regional offices with different needs uh, dictated by. Um, uh, cultural differences or commercial differences or whatever that is, uh, understanding how to move around, understanding how to bring who you are as a designer, your previous experiences and make them fit into that branding, right? Uh, not having access to all the people that is involved with that kind of stuff within a marketing organization and uh, all that. It's, it's, it's super tricky. Super yeah. tricky. I mean, that's, I, I work in a small company, you know, a group of about 15. And even then, you know, we still had to figure out how, how to adjust. And so like one question on a global scale, like what is the main kind of form of communication that you use or do you use multiple for different reasons? Yeah, right now we are using a couple of uh, platforms. Uh, from a project management standpoint, uh, we use a platform called uh, QuickBase. Uh, that's what we use for um, everything that is production, right? Uh, we get our uh, tasks through uh, this platform and uh, we work on them. Uh, so that's um, project specific related. Uh, uh, email, um, there is a lot of information that comes to us or information that is exchanged through uh, email today. Um, most of the day-to-day, -day, most of uh, exchange of uh, important documents that are associated with product launches or uh, specific tasks that uh, our team has, right? And then uh, we introduced uh, Teams uh, a few months ago, I think as part of uh, the get the situation uh, figure out when uh, the pandemic started and we are uh, still trying to figure that out where what is it that we are going to be communicating consistently through teams and uh, what is it that we are going to be communicating through email to make it as, as straightforward as possible uh, as I said because of the complexity of our internal process and how all the teams involved in that process um, have a say or uh, have a role within those processes. It's critical for us to make sure that all the documentation, all, all the updates coming from the plants, coming from the people doing the test, uh, testing on the products, new products and everything else. It's, it's crucial for us to make sure that if you need, I don't know, document A, you know where to go and find it. So. Yeah. Uh, that's been critical and we're working on it. Uh, we're working with uh, IT on um, providing them with specific needs that we have uh, from a communication standpoint so they can help us tailor that structure of uh, communication platforms that we are going to be using. Yeah, that's Honestly, oh, that, that was going to be my question, Rodrigo, because I, I work for a large company. We have about 40,000 employees. 
Our design organization is very small though. And so typically from a technology standpoint, any platform that we're using to communicate is kind of cascaded down from the IT department. And yeah. there are times, you know, working with our customer experience team, for example, that we'll get together and say, oh my goodness, like we need these certain tools. Uh -huh. We typically have to collaborate with IT to get anything through the system. There's all kinds of protocols. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you have any advice or um, experiences you can share with like how you've eased that process um, to make sure that your team has what they need to, to do their job well in this crazy virtual time. Yeah. So my feedback to the people working on um, putting the right structure together has been we need to use these applications with purpose, right? Uh, we cannot, because it's really easy to just, oh, if you are in teams and you have to say something to one of your uh, peers in a different team or something, it's just easy to just go ahead and, and send an email and a message through, through chat, right? And uh, I, I worked on teams for the first time when I was at Wonder, at Wonderman, and uh, it is an amazing tool. It is an amazing application but it needs to be used with purpose because we need to separate what comes through that, uh, through Teams and what comes through email for us specifically because of the way uh, we communicate. So my, my advice has always been, let's define how we need to use the, the, uh, the Teams application and stick to it. Uh, let's define what's gonna come through email and stick to it. So what's happening is that being an organization that is driven by sales and most of the sales team being like out there all the time in different times from a pandemic from, because right now, as uh, you might uh, guess, uh, we are in a very virtual environment. Uh, so they are not as um, on the street as they are used to, but still IT, uh, has had a hard time figuring out uh, privileges uh, given to users. What I mean by that is when I was at Wonderman, for example, I had the um, I had the freedom to create my own teams within teams according to the needs that the department had, for example, right? Set up a team for specific reasons is that uh, a team that is uh, a channel that is associated with inspiration or one that is associated with uh, projects that are going on right now. Uh, so we cannot do that right now because of the diversity of the user and the role that we all play and the diversity of the needs uh, from all of us. If they allow us to create what we need, it would be almost unmanageable for IT when it comes to the back end of the application, right? So they are limiting, uh, limiting the, the, the options that we have to create our own content within Teams. So we are, uh, we are given very specific guides on how to use it and when to use it. So that's what uh, we are doing today. Uh, the head of the uh, project management department, who is a wonderful uh, lady who's been with Interface uh, for a good amount of time. She's leading the charge with IT. Uh, she's collecting all the feedback from uh, different teams within marketing uh, to see how can they train us on how to use it and use it right. That's, that's really great. We actually got a question. I think that answered it perfectly. <laughs> Um, and it, it is interesting on that scale how to, I think what you said earlier about purpose and identifying what, what you're doing in the different communication platforms is really key to, to keeping all of these variables kind of manageable. Otherwise, you know, you can't expect somebody to send you a chat message and that be the request for a project that needs to come through an uh, email, for example, or figuring out those kind of uh, guidelines is really helpful in process. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, we need to be as efficient as we can with, with uh, those platforms. Uh, sometimes uh, email is um, uh, very hard to manage just because we lost the face-to-face -face opportunities, which are, I mean, uh, Basecamp, uh, our, our um, headquarters, 
is very well known for that kind of environment where everybody collaborates. Uh, there are not uh, designated desks. Uh, you just see it whatever you want to see it. And there are uh, different kinds of, of environments because we use our headquarters as our showroom as well in Atlanta. So uh, it is a very cool space where you can just go in a uh, wide area where you can be sitting with other people, but you can also be in these capsules that you are sitting by yourself in a very contained space. Um, so what we have experienced is email is uh, gone to, to the roof. Um, uh, speaking with my wife the other day, they, they had to implement like um, specific um, uh, subject lines that tell you before you read the email, the, the level of importance of that email, just so they are more efficient on uh, when they jump or not on email and respond to them. So I am considering something like that to uh, implement with my team as well. So I don't know, something as simple as please read or uh, please respond in two days or something that tells you from the very subject line if you need to take care of that immediately or if you have some time so you can work on your email more efficiently. Uh, I, I That's think a really good one. Yeah, I could only imagine too you're getting if you get like 60, 50 emails every hour or whatever, uh, you know, it's hard to analyze that. So that's a good idea. I like that. Uh, I think kind of moving into our next subject about collaboration and communication, obviously going and meeting in person is, is what we all are missing right now. Uh, but with that being the case, we still kind of want to connect with our coworkers and kind of to Amy's point, it seems like a lot of people are, are connecting more with their coworkers now. Uh, so I'm kind of interested to see uh, what are some of the ways that you've been able to create that that space where you can communicate with your your team on more of a personal level and still build those relationships that you typically could would do in person? That one is uh, one that is very interesting because uh, we are more connected as a team now than uh, we have ever been. And let me give you a little bit of background about our team. Uh, our creative team is a team of uh, four people in-house and two to three uh, external uh, vendors who have been collaborating with us for a while, right? Um, when um, our team today is the result of a restructure that happened at some point last year, uh, the creative team for Interface used to be located in Chicago where we have um, our uh, second largest uh, office and showroom, uh, the largest event for our industry uh, happens in Chicago and uh, these guys were super involved with that kind of stuff. Uh, so as part of the restructure, they decided to bring the team to uh, Atlanta and it's basically 80% uh, the team is, uh, is near, right? So we have um, myself and um, a graphic designer in our um, headquarters in um, Atlanta uh, downtown. And then we have uh, another partner who works in one of the plants. Uh, she's more involved. She's part of the creative team, but she's not a graphic designer exactly. She is. She takes care of uh, photography collections, the books associated to them, uh, putting together um, the design of the space. Um, uh, and I can... Um, deep and uh, dive a little deeper into who we are uh, from a creative standpoint in a second. Uh, so she works in Lagrange and then we have another graphic designer who lives in New Hampshire because she's part of the Nora team. Nora is a company that we acquired one or two years ago and um, through them we produce uh, rubber uh, flooring. Um, it's the kind of uh, floor that you see at hospitals, schools, and um, um, specifically there. Um, so she's in New Hampshire. So when I joined the company, you had this team that has been disconnected for a while. And I, and I talked to my boss and I, I, I said, uh, the first thing or one of the uh, main things that I want to do is to have a team that is connected. It's a team that is uh, uh, having conversation all the time uh, where we can... Um, help each other, consult each other as much as we can inspire each other, right? So right before the pandemic, uh, we uh, put together two uh, meetings a week, 
uh, one meeting being uh, more like um, production or project status related. Um, so we could cover everything that was uh, needed from us. And then uh, we had a, a meeting that was a little more social. When this happened, those meetings uh, became even stronger and more needed for us. Uh, so for the first um, three months, four months, we would have our weekly meeting as a group. Uh, in that meeting, we would use the, the beginning of that meeting to just share positive stuff, uh, share what was going on with our lives, uh, to share um, changes or things that we implemented at home as a result of, the, of all the challenges uh, that could share with the, with the group and just be inspired and positive because, you know, the beginning was a little tough at uh, individual level. So I wanted this meeting to be like, Okay, let's let's be positive for a for a few for a few minutes. Share what we want to share. We share movies, books, um, processes at home that uh, allowed us to do things better, whatever that was, and then a status meeting. And then we had a happy hour for the for the group uh, on Fridays, like at three forty five p.m. So it would be the last thing that we did as a group uh, for the week. Uh, that helped us a lot to just release all that stress uh, through the week. Um, we, the creative team at Interface, uh, different from the other two teams that are part of IDS. Uh, again, I'll explain you a little bit uh, about our structure in a second. We are the busiest right now because the other two design groups that are part of the group that we are part of, they are more focused on product. They either uh, work on customization of uh, the product that is existing, uh, that customization being using different colors for a specific pattern or tweaking the pattern in a way that uh, fits a client in a, in a better way for their space or things like that. And then uh, the other group, they are the group proposing to our clients what product to use on which part of the space that is part of a project like Product A could be great for your hallways. Product B could be great for your kitchen and break rooms and all that kind of stuff. All of us designers, designers within different disciplines, right? Mm -hmm. So those two groups have experienced um, a, a slowdown in their task request for obvious reasons. Their, the construction was stopped for a second. Um, they didn't have access, uh, our uh, salespeople didn't have access to their clients face-to-face. Uh, -face. So that took all that workload down a little bit. Us, on the other hand, we are busier than ever because we moved, we, first of all, uh, leadership at Interface is doing whatever they can to accelerate uh, uh, product launches so our calendar just sped up and we are producing way more than we produced uh, a year ago. And then, um, um, so we are producing that and then uh, we went uh, virtual for the most part. So that the sales team uh, way of selling our product being face to face, they need way more tools and resources that are digital today, right? So we increased uh, the amount of work that we have uh, through uh, new assets that we need to produce. And uh, we also changed um, the, um, uh, the launch kit. When, when we launch a new product, there is this box or kit that we send to our salespeople that has samples, postcards, and every kind of piece that is branded according to that product launch so they can share with their clients. So we have um, made that uh, kit a little more robust uh, to offer better things and more things today to compensate for the lack of access to face-to-face uh, -face conversation. So we are super busy. Um, so we, re we, re we really needed to have that meeting for stay connected in terms of projects and that meeting stay connected as individuals who, 
who can at the end of a Friday just um, share a beer through Zooms and uh, through Zoom and just um, be positive to begin the weekend and just relax a little bit. You know, I think that that's really cool, uh, and it goes to back to the idea of communication too. It's not just the platform that you're using or what you're saying, but uh, how you're connecting with people uh, matters a lot. Like being able to just relax, opens yourself up a little bit more, allows these processes to work better, allows people to relate better. And it's just really important, especially now uh, to have that as you just described. I think that that really highlighted that. That's really great. Um, yeah. Specifically on your team, now you talked about your Atlanta team uh, for graphics, but how do you how do you do like virtual critiques? Is it just jumping on a, a call like this and talking through it? Do you have any platforms that you use for that specifically? Or well, Teams has been a great addition to uh, to the team in that regards. Not just to do the meetings uh, themselves, just because we can see each other, send notes, and exchange files and all that stuff but uh, we can uh, also use it for this kind of uh, reviewing processes. So we are, uh, we are doing a lot of uh, Teams meeting where we can uh, just uh, share the screen and, and go through it. Um, I haven't uh, reached the level of collaboration that I uh, would like to have within my team just because of how busy we are. We cannot, uh, as have as much time as I wish we had to just get together, brainstorm and, and share ideas and share progress uh, with others. But uh, we are trying to do so with at least the higher level uh, product launches or program launches or um, um, specific project that, it, that, that it's very important to interface. Um, so we're trying to uh, be as collaborative as possible. Um, we, um, I would like to reach a point where uh, our workloads uh, allow us to have uh, another uh, meeting that is purely inspirational, where we can just get together, even if it is like twice a month or every three weeks or something, but something where we can just uh, get together, share the things that we are interested about. Uh, some of us like photography, some of us like animation, some of us like other things. I, I, I think that is very important for the team to uh, take a look at, at what's happening out there from a marketing and advertising standpoint. And I'm not just talking about our industry specifically. I think it's important today to take a look at everybody in general, every company, everything that is remarkable, every, everything that is not remarkable that we don't want to be doing. Uh, you know, So at some point, we should be able to uh, implement a new uh, meeting that allows us to stay connected creatively. I think that's a great point, Rodrigo. The other thing that I would ask, and this came up in the chat, um, it's a good question from Amy. I was also thinking about it. During this time while we're all working virtually and, and trying to stay connected, do you find having tough conversations with employees is harder? I cannot recall that I've had a tough conversation at this point, which is a great thing. That's um, great. Yeah. But I would say if uh, that happens at some point, uh, I think either on the camera, I think that that's personal perception if, if you ask me, you know, uh, I think that a conversation like that has the seriousness uh, into it. It doesn't matter the channel. Uh, it would be ideal to have a, an in-person conversation, but uh, given the situation, uh, I mean, we have the, the right um, tools to be able to connect and, and, and get it uh, get it to work. Um, we are also free to come to um, uh, base camp at this point. Um, um, we are expected to be, we are not expected, but um, they, they would like to see us a couple of um, days a week there, but it's not even mandatory at this point. And, uh, and uh, the organization has been incredibly uh, supportive with us. Um, I rarely go to the office. Uh, I've been to the office uh, three or four times and just because we needed to um, uh, do photo shoots and um, things that we uh, shoot internally. Uh, so I had to be there to collaborate with um, two of my peers and, and make it happen. Uh, even then um, we would have like the fourth floor uh, reserved just for us and uh, 
social distance is applied and uh, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if that's um, the right answer to your question, but um, yeah. No, I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think it's interesting to hear your opinion about it. And I think it's lucky to not have had to have any tough conversations in the last few months, you know, because I think um, like we've had a lot of uh, continued movement in our organization. So there has been a lot of, um, I mean, tough conversation, not individual, not one-on-one. -on -one. Like I haven't had a tough conversation with my manager or anything like that, but we've continued to have a lot of movement um, shifting. Again, like I'm in the B2B sector, so sales is a huge part of our organization. They're also dependent on meeting with clients in person. That hasn't happened in several months. So um, we've had a lot of change. And I think um, I've, I feel lucky. I think my, my organization has handled it very well and has over communicated. We've had lots of town hall meetings, lots of opportunities to ask questions, both in very large formats with the entire organization and also with individual teams. So I think that that's helped a lot as well. Um, and the video, I think the video function has gotten a lot, has gone a lot further than I maybe originally expected it to, you know, because people were always so reluctant to turn their videos on. And now, you know, I, I always joke, like, I'm too extroverted. I have to turn my camera on. Like, I love seeing faces. It just brings me so much joy, you know? So um, it's been interesting to see how that has kind of evolved over the last several months. I, I just turn on my camera depending on how my hair looks that specific day. Uh, <laughs> Definitely that's a factor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to your point, uh, uh, going back to uh, what I told you guys about um, how this whole situation has uh, created an impact in my team, we've been lucky enough uh, that our team has been untouched. Um, uh, obviously, as many other organizations, that there, there have been uh, a couple of um, situations where staff uh, was addressed and uh, some people uh, lost their jobs, unfortunately. Um, but for us, because we are uh, barely producing what needs to be produced right now, uh, our team remains like untouched. Uh, actually, we were able to uh, secure a new um, freelancer to uh, give us a hand and uh, just uh, work with us to make sure that we are producing what, what needs to be produced. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Being able to, um, you know, get the resources you need is really important. Uh, and kind of on to the, what Sam was talking about, about change. Uh, you know, when you first started a company, uh, there's always things that you'll see that are different that you might want to update or that you have to adapt to, whatever the case, you, you're there to make that positive impact and to, to add your a background to make these processes better. And when you first started a company, I mean, imagine that interface being so large, it's not easy to be like, all right, we're going to change it to this now. Uh, it probably, it takes some time and figuring out who to talk to and how that works. So I'm curious about like, what is the balance that you, you strike between adapting and bringing that progress to the teams? That's a good one, Lucas. Um, it is another interesting situation. Uh, when you look at uh, the marketing department within Interface, you see um, quite a lot of people who have been there for, for a long time, right? So these are uh, several teams that are part of uh, marketing that work perfectly in sync, right? They know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. They know the time that it takes to do this and that, and you are coming in uh, trying to catch up as quickly as you can with uh, understanding uh, all the production uh, stages, processes, and everything else. And you are always going to see opportunity. And I, I think that a company hires you uh, uh, in, in a big part because of the experience that you bring from uh, other uh, roles. So you are always going to see opportunity, but it is very important that uh, we all understand that uh, adapting to what is established and uh, working properly, uh, it's, it's a huge thing for, for them too, and, and for you, to, to be honest. Yeah. So there's been, there's been a balance. I think that we've been able to um, provide a couple of ideas uh, 
in tweaking uh, the processes, probably the, the project uh, management um, process or how we use our internal platform. Um, I was able to uh, bring someone who is helping me um, um, manage all the workload uh, because at the beginning uh, that relied on uh, myself and because of the size of the workload that we have, um, it would be very, it would be impossible for me to be focused on the creative side of things, production and then project management. So I think that that's, uh, that was a big win for us. We proposed uh, having a um, um, part-time project manager uh, who could be uh, that connection between the creative team and the project management team. Um, so that's a, that's a good one. Um, I don't know, I think that internally through uh, different meetings or how we have adapted to new ways of doing things because of the pandemic, um, we have also been able to uh, tweak our participation within uh, that structure. So we've been uh, bringing more opportunity to the graphic designers to step up a little bit more uh, having more um, opportunity to just have one-on-one -on -one conversations with leaders within the marketing organization, make sure that uh, they have what they need for uh, to complete their tasks. Uh, so we've, we've been pushing them to have more exposure to um, higher level of uh, leadership. Um, that's, been, that's been great for the group. Um, I think that those two have been uh, uh, good wins for us as a team. That's really great. Yeah, allowing, being able to interact with different levels that you might not have been before is also maybe one of these uh, things that happened during the pandemic, being able to talk to different sides of the organization now uh, becomes more relevant and important. So that's really cool. And being able to like, uh, so when you see something that you're like, okay, this is what I need to do, uh, I need a, I need a project manager, for example. Uh, do you how do you go about addressing that change? Who do you do you reach out to uh, your superiors? Your your how how does it work to to make that become a reality? Yeah, um, my boss, who is the uh, director of the IDS, and I promised you guys that I would give you more context. Uh, IDS um, interface uh, design studio. Uh, this is a group of uh, three teams, um, creative, um, who we do everything that is branding, marketing, and advertising um, in, in general. Then you have the custom team. The custom team are those guys who I described as the ones who tweak the product in a way to um, accommodate uh, clients' needs, specific needs. So they are a different kind of designers, right? And then you have the space designers. Uh, they are working with um, our um, account executives to help them put together the right presentations to sell our product for specific locations or, um, or spaces. So, Working, um, working together, working together as a group, and and finding finding the right balance to where we jump in, where we jump out, and we provide simultaneously what uh, what it's expected to us uh, has been critical. When uh, that started happening and being new to the role, but then starting to learn workloads, needs, um, uh, the different kind of work that we do. Uh, we started identifying those uh, um, uh, challenges or opportunities that we had from a staff standpoint. Yeah. My boss has been super supportive and uh, I think that we connect very well in the way we see the team growing. So uh, it goes through her and then from her, it goes all the way to uh, leadership because as you can expect, uh, budget is um, very well kept right now, right? Uh, so you really need to um, prove that you have a case and uh, it goes from there. But I can tell that uh, what we have needed at this point, um, we, we've got um, some. That's really great. Yeah, going back to it's like 
and maybe a little ironic, like we're all on our own islands out here. But again, even before the pandemic, it really takes that collaboration between groups and kind of focusing on a goal. You know, like this is why I'm, I don't just want this person because I want this person. It's like we've, we've had discussions around why this is important. You see the workflows, you, you make your case like that. Uh, I think that, that that's how you make that change and you balance it when you're adapting to it. So I think that that addressed that really well. Yeah, and as I said, we've seen an increase, a substantial increase in our workload. So it's it's been easy to prove. And uh, another part of this answer that can be uh, part of uh, the answer to your previous question uh, about how to uh, get involved with uh, other teams. I think that um, when you think about the creative team being a, a new entity within the marketing department, just because of the restructure and bringing uh, what was in Chicago, we are kind of creating a new uh, relationship between creative and marketing. So we are uh, very aware of that and we are doing our very best to uh, make sure that we are delivering on um, fixing what's, what was broken before uh, on um, bringing that level of satisfaction from uh, the marketing team to the highest possible level. And we've been doing that through increasing the willingness, the willingness to collaborate with them. So there is a lot of conversation going on. There, there is a lot of, uh, hey, we're working on this. What do you think about it? Uh, reaching out to um, leaders within marketing as uh, uh, as an opportunity to say, hey, my team is working on this. I know that you have uh, a huge experience in this specific topic. Can you take a look at that and, and let me know what you think? So we are reaching out more to everybody to create a better uh, sync within marketing. Uh, I was very happy to hear from one of uh, our designers in the creative team he said that uh, he feels he's been um, with Interface for almost 10 years, if I remember exactly, uh, correctly. Um, he said, there has never been this level of communication and collaboration within, within the, the whole structure. So I think that uh, we're doing right. That's definitely a compliment. That's really great to hear. Yeah. Well, that, that's, I mean, there's not much more you can ask for. That's that's what you're hired for, you know, to, to connect and, and inspire and make sure that that collaboration. And during a time like this with the pandemic, it's it's really great to hear how we adapt to that and how how effective it can be on large scales too. And and I truly believe that uh, great creative work comes out of collaboration and insight. Uh, it doesn't come from. Uh, individual talent, even though it is needed. Uh, it comes from sharing, exploring, testing, talking about it. Um, I am a huge fan of feedback, positive, negative, whatever it is. We all grow as creatives uh, because of feedback and how we address it, right? And how we incorporate that feedback into our um, professional mind. Um, so we're doing our best to just go with collaboration. Very cool. Well, you know, kind of on your note about uh, it's important to communicate on just a layer of just friends and being able to talk, I figured maybe we could just ask some questions that are outside of our scope here and just kind of have a little bit of a conversation in these last five minutes. Um, just in general, just wondering what is like one specific piece of advice that you've gotten over the year that's really helped you in your career? Anything stick out particularly? Ooh, <laughs> that's a good one. And um, I would go with my own belief, if I may. Yeah. I think that something that has been very important for me and my evolution uh, within my career has been taking what you have today and do it with your heart and do it as uh, hard as you can. And even though that task may not be what you want to be working on, uh, working with a high sense of um, ethics and love 
uh, life is going to bring you the opportunities that you're looking for. It's kind of the quote that we need to um, pay in advance to get to a better place. So I would say love what you do, even if it is not the ideal from uh, what you envision yourself being doing in the future, do it right. And that's going to take you somewhere at some point. Yeah, putting your heart into it. And, yeah. you know, every experience you go through will help build you in the future too. Even if it's not particularly, no one, no one necessarily knows exactly where they're going to go either. I mean, maybe there are a few, very few people who are like, I need to do this. And from day one, they do it. But all these things build on each other. And with that kind of philosophy, that's really great. I think that that makes sense. And, and, and another one would be um, subjectivity is a big, big um, challenge in our career uh, because everything that is creative is subjective, right? Yep. So understanding that and be willing to um, listen to feedback and different point of views on the ideas that you put together and uh, make sure that it is not just what you know is right or what you like uh, because it feels right. It is also about the need that is behind every project and um, just getting uh, going with it and, and making sure that uh, you can adapt. Yeah, I, that's a good one too, uh, particularly obviously with clients too, where maybe you have somebody who doesn't exactly know all the steps in a creative process, right? You're kind of helping them through it maybe the first time. It's important to be able to listen and digest what they're saying too, because you're doing it for them. So uh, their feedback is important, even if they don't necessarily know how it's uh, being created. And, and to be able to open to that can be tough. I know in our, our field, uh, you gotta have to have a thick skin to be a, a great creative for sure. Yeah, uh, a few years ago, I spent uh, quite a few years working in uh, editorial design and I worked with um, a couple of newspapers. And back in the day when I was in my thirties and my eyes were working properly, I would fight over reverse type all the time <laughs> and the size of the type. And I would fight about it is readable, it is readable. So guess what? I am in my late forties, my eyes don't work anymore. And uh, when I see stuff like that, I am like, oh, they, <laughs> right. they, they, there was a need for this and I couldn't see it. Um, so. Very cool. Yeah, it changes over time too. You know, you might not even recognize what someone's saying, and if, unless you're open-minded to being able to listen to that, you're close. You close yourself off to to potential insights. Yep. Uh, all right. Let me wh one more quick one here. Uh, this is just a high level. Like, how do you stay inspired? I mean, obviously, we've all looked over Pinterest and type in Google and things of that nature. Is there anything else that you do uh, to stay inspired? So in this one, I want to be as honest as possible. I think that um, you, you had to look for ways to be inspired really hard, like 15 years ago when we didn't have the access to information that we have today. Um, to say one specific way today would be uh, narrowing down your options. You know, uh, I think that inspiration comes from everything. It comes from your kids. It comes from your house. It comes from your work. It comes from Pinterest. It comes from Google. Like, um, I think that younger generations, uh, specifically if you, if you think about designers, uh, when I was starting my career, I mean, computer, if you, if you were lucky at that point when I was uh, finalizing college, uh, ending college, right? Uh, today, inspirations, uh, inspiration come from everywhere. Uh, more than inspiration, specifically looking at something specifically, I think that is important for us to have things that we like uh, doing and doing them as a way of refreshing your mind to release your stress to, I don't know, keep, uh, keep your ideas. And um, I am going to throw this one out there to see if anyone can connect. A few years ago, when I joined my Callister's Daily um, or Focus Brands, we were in a marketing uh, uh, meeting, a weekly meeting, and our VP of marketing said, you know what, guys? Uh, most of the ideas that I get come to me when I am in the shower. And I was like, 
shoot, that happens to me a lot. And I didn't identify that as a thing. And you might think that I am crazy, but some of the, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't say the best ideas, but I, I get a lot of thinking uh, when I am uh, in the shower and uh, I put together lots of things um, following, that, following that process. So something funny to consider, maybe someone can connect to that. Yeah, I'm a Pisces, so I don't, I don't know if it is the connection with the water, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have people here saying they have a waterproof notebook, uh, Liam and pencil for the oh, show. Oh, nice. <laughs> Definitely something. <What>? Nice. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I wanted to use uh, Siri, but Siri has a hard time understanding my accent. I don't know why. Um, so I haven't been able to implement that one. Well, very, very cool. Yeah, I, I love that. You know, inspiration comes from everywhere. It doesn't have to be sitting at a desk or a computer. It's everywhere. And that's great. To, again, allow yourself open mindedness to uh, uh, kind of accept all the inspiration from wherever they come. So. I think this is very important to take a look at everything in general, not just focus on the specific um, industry that you're working yeah. for specific time. Um, just keep an eye of how people do stuff. Well, I think that is a fantastic note to end it on. Uh, so with that, Rodrigo, I really appreciate you taking the time today uh, on the AIJ Insider. Uh, Sam, thank you. I'm Lucas again. We appreciate it and look forward to what you're doing at Interface. Thank you very much. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. It's uh, very important to keep um, the younger generations inspired and just en route to pursue their career. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thanks thank a lot. You. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good one.